Good morning and welcome to another Can Diagnostic episode. In today's riveting episode, we have a Scania 410. Okay. Um, now the firm it's come from, they fitted a the turbo because the turbo blue. Um, they also fitted a new intercooler, as you can see. Beautiful and shiny. Um, so all the cold side of the turbo system, the air inlet system, was cleaned and replaced. However, what they failed to do was clean the hot side. So those that don't know, this is the exhaust, this is the cat. This is the stack. And as you can see, it has shot a load of oil out. All up the back of the cab. All this black stuff is just dirt, dirt infested oil. Look at it, sitting everywhere. So, there are two parts of the turbo, as many of you know, the cold side and the hot side. And what you don't want is oil in the hot side. It has been pushed through the cat. Um, it's got like a tubular cat that sits in the middle of the, of the silencer box um, and then comes up and through the stack. Apparently, there were two foot flames coming out of that, whether you believe that or not, I don't know. But what we've got to do is repair this now. Um, it's likely it's going to need a new cat um, or a whole new, or it's probably going to put a new box on. They're very expensive, probably about six grand for that. Um, but what I don't want to do is replace the cat because it would obviously be saturated in oil um, and not get all the, like the, the exhaust galleys and everything that sits inside this silencer. Um, I'm most probably going to change the knock sensors. There's one here. This is the downstream downstream yeah and the upstream which is down there um, obviously the knock sensors covered in oil the oil would have been burning through the sensors so whether they're failed now or not I don't know but they certainly will be failed within the next 10-15 miles or so so that's going to be changed the exhaust stack is going to be taken off and thoroughly cleaned um, and probably look at the turbo and just make sure that's not producing any oil um, the new turbo yeah, you can see it you can just see it through there nice and shiny beautiful turbo oil everywhere else any hole any slight crack in the turbo in the exhaust system is just going to push it straight out um, so I'm going to get involved with this start stripping it down I don't know how much of a diagnostic video this is going to be uh, it might just be more cleaning than anything um, either way, I'll take you through the um, the process of fixing this job. All right, on. right, so we've stripped a bit of it down. So I'm just going to brief you on some of the things we can see around the exhaust box. Um, at the front, this is the DPF pressure differential sensor. Um, next to it, well, if we follow it this way around, to go anti-clockwise, we've got a temperature sensor. The upstream O2 sensor, well it's not an O2, it's a knock sensor, um, for, keep following it anti-clock and then we've got the downstream knock sensor, you can see there's quite a lot of fucking oil that's come out of this, um, doesn't look too bad but we still can probably end up changing it, we've got the two control modules for the knock sensors covered in dirt, um, this is the temperature sensor assembly block with one, two, three temperature sensors coming into it. Now it's one unit this is, so when one temperature sensor goes down you have to change all three of them because it's a sealed unit. Um, we'll keep following the wiring round. So down here we've got a secondary temperature sensor and we have the dosing module or the injector module I think they call it. And these are blue pipes are heated on this the actual pipe itself is heated so there's like a coil that runs around the outside of the pipe and um, that heats the fluid as it comes through um, following it back up to where we started so behind here there is another temperature sensor and then back to the pressure sensor okay so we're going to do a bit more cleaning i'll show you the actual show you the uh look at the state of that just poured out the exhaust when I took, took it off. 
She's dirty, bud. Right, so a few days later, and we have nice and pretty nice and shiny. So we've got an upstream knock sensor, downstream knock sensor, um, pressure differential sensor, and the temperature sensor, which is three. Three sensors combined into one module. And obviously the silencer in CAT. Uh, cat's under here. You would not believe how heavy these bleeding things are. It was a forklift job to get that off the um, off the van. But after having a word with the customer, we agreed that the best thing to do would be to replace every sensor on this exhaust. Obviously this is um, doing HS2 work in the UK, so it's preparing for the high speed rail. So this cannot, they can't afford for us to play up and keep coming in and out, in and out for me to change sensors. So we're just going to get them all done in one foul swoop. Fortunately, sometimes that's the name of the game. So in about three seconds flat, this will be changed. Right, who's on, look. Right, this thing is bleeding heavy, all right? Really heavy. Um, so yeah, I had to mount it with some jacks, and obviously because I'm such a big muscled bugger, lifted it on all right with the help. Um, so we've got the new pressure differential sensor on, um, temperature sensor, Oops. upstream sensor. I always get these mixed up. Beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. With the downstream. New box. It's got a new DPF inside of here. The only thing we haven't changed is this module here because we're already on about ten grand's worth of uh, ten grand's worth of uh, kit at the minute, and that's a lot of money for just for one exhaust system essentially. So I've taken the stack off as you can see here. Imagine my arm. That's the stack. We took that off getting that cleaned um, I'm gonna take this stack off here also gonna get that cleaned um, I don't think you'll be able to you can see up there and I've had this running with the exhaust off the only thing that's come out of the turbo is a bit of condensation there's no oil coming out of here so I'm pretty confident that the oil that had filled the old exhaust was from when the old turbo collapsed. But I just had to make sure that sometimes you get a faulty turbo. It's uncommon, but when you're spending 10 grand, you need to be checking these things. So I'm just gonna put the, the covers on now, to get this exhaust clean, put it back on. Uh, next step you should see, we'll have, uh, I don't even know where the covers are. When I eventually find the covers for the exhaust, I'll put those on and we'll get in the cab and we will teach in this new DPF. I'll probably regen it as well, just because it's got a new DPF, I want it to be done at least once, just so I know that all the sensors that are fitted are working correctly. So we'll do a whole cycle with that. So I'll see you on the, uh, the diagnostics. Right, so we are ready. As you can see, I've had the engine running for a while. The temperature is, well, it has been sat at running temperature for about an hour already. Um, purely the fact that I don't want to start the engine, get it right up to temperature and then blast it with um, a regen or anything like that. I want to burn any excess oil that may be left lingering in the pipes off. Um, I don't particularly want to burn the oil at 600 degrees straight away. It may cause more fire. So just in case, I've got my trusty fire extinguisher ready, as I have on every uh, regen I do. Um, check the water check the oil, do the basics, make sure there's no oil underneath the lorry, especially around the exhaust, anything that could potentially catch fire when it gets hot. Yeah, it's a bit of common sense really. So, we plugged SD P3 in. Let's get it somewhere. So we've got a multitude of fault codes, which is best to do this. Which is expected when I ran the um, the engine with no exhaust and none of the none of the connectors on. So I'm just going to delete these. Yeah. 
read. Thanks, Elizabeth. Okay, start the engine again. And then let's go to the SCR module. Okay, so these are all inactive now, so we're not going to delete these. So let's just show active codes. None. Engine warning light is off. Okay. So from here, I'm going to go to functions and see what calibration first. Let's see if we can teach in or teach in process or something similar. Exhaust gas, new ID number when renewing, renewing the particulate filter. Okay, all right, I need to go and find the sticker that I took off the exhaust. Two minutes. All right, so I found it. It's uh, been trod on and run over a few times, but it's still all good. So we we'll go back to this. Just going to press next. So particulate filter ID. Right, it's going to be this one here. So I'm going to put you down, and I'm going to. Talk. All right, so that ID number. It's just been entered. So much bleeding glare today. Into here. I press next and hopefully accepts that. Okay, so we've got to update the shops files. All right, I turned you off just at the wrong moment. The update was successful. The, the information was saved in the shops file and will be uploaded to Scania. And the next STP3 is connected. Press 3 and reset the data for the ash and soot. Press 3, press next driver. Okay, reset. Is it going to do anything else or is it going to kick me out now? Right, I'm just going to go for it. Reset the, the differential pressure sensor because it's been a new one. Done. Data reset. Okay. Right, so it's carried out the default. Right, now I'm going to go to adjustment. I think it's, in, it's either in just adjustment or no, actually it might be check. I do no, can't remember. But we'll wait for it to read. I think it's check actually. I want to go through and I want to. I'm going to run some tests on the um, dosing module. Yeah, this is this is not what I want. Right, let's go to check. So we're still on power train at the minute, so it just gives a lot less on page. Right, so there's an awful lot of stuff that can be checked manually, visually, etc. Um, 
but I'm gonna go straight to function test of the SCR. Actually, no, I'm not. There's no need. There's really no need. Yeah, I'm not doing that. Because if it passes the regen, then it's all good anyway. This is going to take an hour to do. Wait for the clutch to be closed. They should do it automatically, obviously. Being an auto. So this is slowly going to increase the RPM. Everything's happening manually now. Manually, I mean automatically. My feet are nowhere near the pedals. E so after the two meters up, I'll start you off with me on the regen side of it, and then we'll come back just as it's um, finishing an hour later. Right, so it's saying the, in the shut input value was low, and it does not seem to need any regeneration of the particulate filter. Press next if you want to run a regeneration in spite of this. Well, I do. And I'll tell you why I'm running a regen. Now, some of you U2 experts can say there's no need. Why are you running a regen when it's a brand new unit? When you're absolutely right. However, my reasoning is that if, when, I, when this goes out, I want to make sure that it can, it has the potential to run a full regen. I don't want this back in a week's time with a brand new exhaust being full of soot um, or ash or anything like that because something's gone wrong. One of the sensors has failed, etc., etc. Um, so I'm going to give this back in confidence and saying I know it's going to perform its own regen because I've done one myself. Simple as that. It's belts and braces and all that bollocks. So yes, I am going to run a regen. As you can see, the knock sensor is showing zero parts per million, which is exactly what we'd expect. Um, it's going to raise the temperature itself, it's going to do everything itself. This is going to take a good hour. So I'll show you the smoke it's given off already. Look at that. Woo! Okay, and we're finished an hour later. Um, no warning lights. The particulate filter can never be used as normal again. Could have been anyway, but like we say, we're just being safe. And that is that. Could let it cool idle for a couple of minutes, let it cool down a bit. Um, turn the turn the engine off, let it cool down. Check the water, check the oil again. Um, give it back to the customer with a nice big FG bill. So. Thank you, and uh, until next time, ta-da.